With the 2022-23 NBA season now coming to a close, the members of the 2022 NBA Draft class have all completed their first year in the league. Today we are going to be reviewing the performance of every lottery pick in this year's past drafts, rookie year, and giving them a grade on a scale of F to A. Without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start with the number one overall pick and the rookie of the year favorite and Paolo Bancaro, selected first overall by the Orlando Magic out of Duke. We did talk a lot about him in my previous video on another standout rookie, but overall Bancaro has had a very nice rookie season. The efficiency has lacked at times, but on the season he's put up 27 and just under 4 assists on 53% true shooting and at times he really flashed how good of a player he's going to become. He also had a very very impressive 40 20 point games as a rookie, the same number as LeBron had in his rookie year and his ability to already be the go to guy on a team and a high volume scorer with some playmaking chops as well is why he is the favorite to be the rookie of the year. I would give Ben Caro an A- minus, just because he had a few really rough stretches in terms of his efficiency, but it's clear he's going to be a very, very good player in this league. As for the second pick, Chet Holmgren, he gets an incomplete grade because he missed the entire season due to injury for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I look forward to watching him in action next year for them though, and he could be a Rookie of the Year candidate for next year. And third overall, moving on, was uh, Jabari Smith went to the Houston Rockets and Smith has been in a non-ideal situation with the Rockets who are really just a mess of an organization and have a coach at Steven Silas who they parted ways with after their final game of the regular season. Smith was playing in a system with no type of structure and in his rookie year he really struggled at times. But also towards the end of the year he really showed the shooting and defense that made him the third overall pick. On the season, he put up just under 13 points with 7 boards and a block on a pretty poor 51 true shooting percentage, but in the last 20 games of his rookie season, Smith had better averages of almost 16 points over 7 boards and a block on 57% true shooting and pretty solid 47-36-78 splits. Smith was put in a really rough situation and while he got to play a lot for Houston, it was on a Rockets team that had little to no structure, poor coaching, with a poorly built roster, and no real proper point guard to feed him. I'd give him a C+, but I'd expect much better things from him in the future, especially if the Rockets are able to get James Harden or Scoot Henderson, someone who could really get him the ball. Fourth overall was Keegan Murray, out of Iowa and he went to the Sacramento Kings. He was one of the older prospects in this draft and was someone teams were expecting to contribute sooner than later and he has most definitely done that for the Kings, helping them break their very long playoff drought and in his rookie year he put up a solid 12 points and 4 boards on an efficient almost 60% true shooting percentage. He also shot 41% from 3 and set the single season rookie record for most 3 pointers made. I'd give his rookie season an A-. You know, I kind of thought he would score more, we would see more scoring production out of him in just terms of his points per game number, but he has been a key contributor on a very good team in Sacramento who is the 3 seed in the West and he's a 41% 3 point shooter as a rookie. Fifth overall was Jaden Ivey, the high-flying combo guard out of Purdue who went to the Detroit Pistons. Ivey had some really nice stretches of play throughout his rookie year, averaging 19-7 through the last 20 games of the season and displaying his very impressive pull-up shooting at times, shooting 41% on pull-up threes for a month-plus stretch in February, as well as shooting 40% from three on over 7 attempts a game in his last 8 games of his rookie season. His overall efficiency though wasn't too great, as on the season he did average 16-5 and on just under 53% true shooting and 41-34-74 splits. But he showed some really encouraging stuff on an awful Pistons team that only won 17 games and really missed Cade Cunningham for the majority of the season, and for that reason I'd give Ivy a B+. Speaking of high-flying scoring guards, another one went off the board 6th to Indiana with Benedict Matherin being selected by the Pacers. 
Matherin has scored the ball more than any rookie not named Paolo Bancaro and started his NBA career on fire, averaging 19 and 4 boards on 59% true shooting and shooting over 40% from 3 in his first 20 games, and it seemed he was a legitimate rookie of the year contender. Since that point though, he has shot 26% from 3 and is averaging 16 on 55% true shooting. He has also struggled on defense, but nonetheless, he still was second in rookie points and fourth in rookies in true shooting percentage and really showed he has a clear ability to score the ball in bunches. He has a ways to go in terms of his all-around game, but lots of good things were shown from him and I'd give a B plus. Similarly to Ivy, both guys scored and showcased the upside they had, but Matherin needs to work on his game more besides his scoring, and with Ivy, I really think it's really missing Cade Cunningham and really just being more consistent with his efficiency, which isn't anything crazy to worry about. That's something very common with rookies. Another high-flying guard went seventh, and that was Shaden Sharp, who went to Portland. The Canadian mystery man who many didn't know much about and was regarded as one of the guys with the highest ceilings in the class was on a Blazers team that didn't really know if they wanted to develop young guys or compete and Sharp averaged 10 and 3 on 57% true shooting and shot a solid 36% from 3 but late in the season is when he really showed what he can do averaging almost 24 and 6 with 4 assists on 46 38 77 splits for the Blazers. He showed he could score and shot well from 3 as a rookie and it will be very interesting to see which direction this Blazers team goes and how it will dictate his future. I think Sharp did well in his role though and I would give him a B. Next up is Dyson Daniels, the Australian guard slash forward who went 8th overall to New Orleans and there really isn't much to say about him that we didn't know pre-draft. He's a very good defender with good size but pretty far away on the offensive end and on the season he averaged just under 4 points a game with 3 boards and 2 assists on not good at all 42-31-65 splits. He definitely has a ways to go on the offensive end as said before and he needs to become a good 3 point shooter especially if he's going to be playing with Zion and Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum. He needs to space the floor and he's not going to have the ball in his hands a lot so he's got to be able to knock down open shots. I'd give his rookie season a C. Jeremy Sohan, the do-it-all Polish big out of Baylor, was picked 9th by the rebuilding Spurs and he, similar to Daniels, was selected for his defensive tools but has shown a bit more on offense. Sohan is 6'9 and has a handle and legit playmaking skills and passing vision and I definitely think he will be a very good player. He's also very versatile on the defensive end. He did have 5 20 plus point games in his rookie season. But as like Daniels, he has a ways to go on offense, especially as a three-point shooter, only shooting 25% on the season, and averaging 11 points, 5 boards, and 2.5 and assists on 45-25-70 splits. If he could just shoot league average from three at some point, he will be such a valuable player in this league, because he really is at such a high level in other aspects of the game for someone his age. He also, like a lot of these guys, played well towards the end of the season, averaging 15, 6, and 2 in his last 20. And I'd give his rookie season a B-. You know, didn't expect anything crazy from him on offense, but it's clear there is work to be done on that end, but did show some really nice things on a very raw young Spurs squad. 10th overall was Johnny Davis, the man who's been labeled a bust by some already. And I will admit some of the criticism against Davis was unfair as he wasn't playing consistently in the NBA and the Wizards aren't exactly the best organization, but he still was not putting up great numbers in the G League as a lottery pick. A lottery pick that, unlike a guy like Usman Jang or Dyson Daniels, people thought Johnny Davis was going to be good right away. He was picked so high because he was so good in college. He struggled in the G League and in the NBA games he did play, he averaged 6-2 on pretty dreadful 38-24-52 splits, but with consistent playing time towards the end of the season, he did score more. In the last 10 games, he was able to put up 12-5-2, and 
but still on not very good efficiency, posting a very bad true shooting percentage of 44% in those games. I think some people are writing him off a bit too early, but he did have a pretty damn bad rookie season, especially for someone who was expected to be good sooner rather than later and wasn't exactly picked for his super high ceiling and someone who people thought would be a project player and for that reason I would give the Wisconsin product Davis a D on his rookie year. 11th overall was a guy who didn't play much his rookie year. The Frenchman Usman Jiang was picked by Oklahoma City and really going into the draft was viewed as a project player and a player that wouldn't make much of an impact right away, but 2-3 years down the line or 3-4 years down the line, he's someone who has a really high ceiling. And you have to take that into consideration when grading his rookie season and the expectations that went into his performance. He played just 39 games for OKC this season, averaged just under 15 minutes in those games, and put up 5 points, 2 boards, and an assist on just 50% true shooting, which isn't great. But in his first NBA start, he did have 22 points, 9 assists, and 8 rebounds in the Thunder's final game of the season, and in 2-3 years, he could be a really nice piece to this already great Oklahoma City young core. I'd give his rookie season a C though. The Thunder also had the next pick, and 12th overall they selected Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara. Now I'm not going to talk much about him because I just did an entire video on him and his possible case for Rookie of the Year, but he really was great for them and a big part of the Thunder playing postseason basketball again this year. I'd give his rookie season an A. 13th was the 18 year old massive big man out of Memphis, Jalen Duran, and he went to the Detroit Pistons. Duran showed some really nice flashes in his rookie year campaign on a Pistons team that just won 17 games, but he did post an impressive 19 double-doubles as a teenager and averaged 9-8 and eight in his rookie season on 65% shooting from the field as well as a block per game. As a starter, he averaged just over 10 points and over 10 boards with an assist and he looks to be a key piece in Detroit moving forward alongside Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey and when he got the opportunity to play bigger minutes, he really showed some nice things. Detroit does have a crowded front court, but I have no doubt in my mind he's going to be a piece for them moving forward. I'd give him a B plus. And last but not least, the last lottery pick from the 2022 NBA draft was Ochai Akbaji, the wing for the national championship winning Kansas Jayhawks. And he was picked by Cleveland originally, but he was put in the Donovan Mitchell trade. He was shipped to Utah. And he spent the early part of his rookie year, at least part of it, in the G League. But on the season, he played 59 NBA games and averaged 8 and 2 on 56% true shooting for a surprisingly decent Utah Jazz squad. He did have pretty inconsistent playing time, and I'd give him a B minus, as he did show some nice things towards the end of the year, having a 28 point game in their second to last game of the season, and dropping 8 dimes in their last game of the season, but he did struggle with efficiency in his shot at times, and wasn't able to get consistent playing time until later in the year, but he is definitely someone, if he can improve his shooting and become more consistent, we know he can score a bit off the dribble, and he has some tools as a defender, I think he could be a solid player for the Utah Jazz. And those are my grades for every single lottery pick from the 2022 NBA Drafts rookie season. I hope y'all enjoyed. Leave your thoughts below and peace out.